Hello! So happy day to everyone! Happy, 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 wonderful day to you all. So Kim here with Native Lady Book Warrior and I will be discussing my bookish thoughts, likes, and loves for an, an, another Indigenous author, Katharina Vermette, and her lovely book called The Break. So book spoilers coming up, so let's get started, relatives. <laughs> Isn't today awesome? Well, certainly it's going to be a very awesome week for me because I have three kids that will be having birthdays this week or very, very soon. So it's crazy. I cannot believe that sometimes I am a mama of four. Whoa. But anyways, <laughs> welcome back. And very, very new welcomes to those of you who have not visited my channel before. My name is Kim, and I am a lover of cats, snacks, books, and family. So, gonna uh, thank you for spending this time with me. So, viso ave, welcome, viso ge, sit down, get comfy. So, content warning and trigger warning. I will be discussing some hard topics, including sexual assault, sexual violence, trauma, individual, intergenerational, historical, secondary or vicarious trauma, and um, physical violence as well. Alrighty, quick snap recap. Katharina Vermette's The Break is an indigenous fiction that centers around a violent crime or more specifically a sexual assault that takes place on a strip of land that is nicknamed The Break. Uh, this story also superbly interlaces past traumas and experiences by most of the characters, which are all indigenous women of Métis descent, except for one, which is a male Métis officer. This story doesn't happen in chronological order, but it does carefully and exquisitely examine the struggles indigenous people face like racism, violence, identity issues, historical trauma. I also admire and respected how Vermette connected intergenerational trauma, sexual violence, and oppression in this story. And of course, that story streams across three generations of family and friends and you are almost carefully un unnodding or untying the painful events and emotions of that rape on the break, but also of their past traumas and things that ha they have experienced in order to, in my opinion, make sense and kind of connect with the current events to events in their past. I appreciated, like I stated in my book review, the amazing love and care that Vermette took in telling these stories and developing these characters. And I fell deeply in this story. And in that process, I also, in a way, felt safe and understood somehow. Vermette gives resilience a whole new, powerful, lovely face. And it, it, it captivated me. And I myself cried tears of heartbreak, but also tears of healing and restoration. I laughed in this book. I connected with the characters in this book, especially the aunties and, and the cousins. So uh, that was one thing that I really liked was just seeing some of the things that I've experienced reflected back on the pages and also just to see that those experiences are also in a tragic way connects indigenous women who have gone through experiences like some of the characters in this book. This book is split into four parts and those parts are so poetic and and they are powerful words and they're almost like a a a song from the heart and, 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 and that being Rain, right? The mother of, of Stella, daughter of Kokum and um, sister of Cheryl, auntie of Emily. And in my opinion, 
rain also represents the strength of our ancestors and our lost relatives that are always there those words and and sacrifice and love and strength that still guide us to this very day and that still reminds us of our strength in those lost ones and in our ancestors so here's a passage that i really enjoyed from those parts which is rain's perspective when I heard you with such pain and sadness still, and I only wanted to be near you, still needed to be needed by you, I am the light, breath, and wind around you. I am the knowing that you are never really all alone. You are all of my strength and none of my weakness, and you are the dream my life made. Those are the best things I can ever do for you. A storyteller once told me our languages never had a sense of time, that past and present and future happened all at once. I think this is how it happens for me now, all the same time. I think this also is why you don't let me go because I am still happening. None of us ever lets go, not really. No one has ever shown us how or why. But you are so strong, so much stronger than it ever was. I have no doubt you will make it through anything and you just have to take it as it comes and it will come. So, yep, I'm crying. <laughs> Sorry. But there were things in this book that connected deeply for me. And one being the constant um, awareness and alert that my peers and my family and I had growing up, the warnings of of those who who harm of sexual violence. And back then, as a young person, I admit I, I was very naive and not really aware of certain things, and sometimes not understanding fully what those warnings meant. But now I see things so much more differently, and I think and believe why can't we all have a culture that encourages don't rape instead of don't get raped right so also another thing is the intergenerational trauma of sexual violence is something that was very personal for me and so i'm just putting this out there that i myself am i am a i am a sexual assault survivor and my trauma has very much changed me and and some of that change I saw like a mirror like reflected in 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 the characters in this story and and in in these pages and and more specifically in Lou and Paulina and even Emily at times and Vermet wrote these characters not as victims we pity but those that we honor and that are real and that are breathing and that inhale and inhale hope into our hearts and and into our our minds as well so the tone and feel of this book in my opinion it, it felt safe i felt an understanding and empathy rather than events being put on display to just simply shock us or for some cliffhanging plot twist and I very much appreciated that and also this book has maybe been mislabeled as depressing but I think because there are so many complex issues going on here and they are written with non-judgment and a peek into indigenous some of the indigenous truths that are out there people may sometimes find it hard to face and read about these things but because they're violent and painful, but these these stories are very necessary. I was very much wrapped into this world of powerful wisdom and, and the support of women and the love of women, and it was such a thing to behold. So there's this passage, well, there's a lot of them. I took the cab back with Rita and her kids. Rita was beside herself, really, and I wanted to make sure they got in okay. The ride was eerily quiet. I sat in the front next to the driver but kept looking back, looking for something to do, a way to help. Ziggy's little face, all white bandages, her eyes hazy with drugs. She sat slack, leaning against her mother who just held her tight and stared straight ahead. Sonny didn't say a word. 
He just stared out the side window. His young face seemed to have age. We have all been broken in one way or another. Did you eat anything? I call across the great abyss to my son. He moves his head as if he as if to shake it, and the light hits his eyes, bloodshot and sore. Bright red blotches around his beautiful brown eyes, his face pale in its pain. I see it for a second, but then it's everywhere, all around the room. I crawl down behind him and wrap my jacket arms around my lean, long boy and hold him tight. I press my face between his bony shoulder blade wings and I hold on as he tries to cry as quietly as, it, as he can. His hands limp, his game beeping off. So I thought that the, the strength of the story and the writing in the was very much transferred into the hearts and minds of these characters and how women especially indigenous women lean on one another in times of of hardship i i don't want to say that katharina was brave in telling this story but i want to very much state that she was very observant and and very excellent in capturing an honest and pressing reality and the reality of violence against indigenous women and peoples that and that violence and the likelihood of its occurrence and one that has also affected myself vermet gives us an account that is genuine and i valued that honesty and just how she just didn't throw it out there for all of us to see, but she she laid it out there for us in these really awesome perspectives and their stories beautifully interweaving and coming together at the end. And I I valued its honesty because in my opinion, sometimes statistics doesn't do enough. I mean, the numbers of likelihoods, although although it's important in, in seeing seeing what is happening to specific peoples and specific demographics, but in that process, we lose faces, we lose laughter, we lose humor, we lose the stories, we lose the beauty. Shoot, even even a soul of of a person lost or hurt especially in this story with rain and i'm we miss how that hurt affects the next generation or even the overall community or even how it, it can affect a family so <laughs> and finally this book doesn't try to make it a war between the characters or making villains or identifying all these different things but instead this book just just gives us a really important perspective and and a really important look into a family and their resilience and their strength and how that in, even in the face of such tragic events that indigenous peoples are still very strong and that their cultural beliefs and that their teachings it is always there to not to fall back on but it's always there to to show them that strength and to demonstrate their their ties to one another and how those ties are very important and and not simply in just surviving but just in living so this that concludes my book discussion i feel like i can't say enough about this book this book is really amazing and i very much enjoyed it thank you danny gonna thank you for uh, recommending this book and it you're right it, it was amazing okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna end this book discussion with probably one of my favorite passages and it, it it's rain's perspective so my body is only a memory but sometimes memory are the most real of all and even though i am gone you remember and love me so really there is nothing to envy the living the dead don't hang on the living do the dead don't have anything to hang on to our bodies become nothing and we just float around the people who love us we go back to nothing 
that is all we ever were or should ever be. To me, it feels like being in a dream. Things move imperceptibly, change uncontrollably, but ripple long after they are gone, like an echo, hollow and slow to fade. It goes on and on, and then something waves, and it all blurs and curls into something else. The living hang on, the dead long to. So everyone, I wish you all a very good week, and I wish you all a very good the rest of your day. And yep, so I shall see you again soon, and I hope you all doing well. And yep, so this, I shall see you later. All right. Bye. <laughs>